just want to, to mention a couple of things that have been uh, raised. Uh, the uh, Minister of Chile uh, mentioned about uh, the need to find common terminology and to build this terminology, and I think that that is a very important element in all international discussions. I just wanted to do a little bit of publicity because we did have uh, worked in a, in a project with uh, the European, uh, with the support of the European Union on a, on a glossary on migration, environment and climate change, evidence for policy, so this, this is available. And also uh, in, in our new book, The Outlook, we have have a chapter on exactly on, on rights protection and international migrant law that addresses a little bit uh, the gaps uh, that, that you were talking about. So let me then move to, to comments and questions uh, from the floor. Uh, I've been informed that the ambassador from Costa Rica, Ambassador White, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Director. I would like to, uh, first of all, uh, welcome the distinguished members of the panel and the Director General of the organization, uh, Ambassador William Lacey Swing. And I'd also like to use this opportunity to recognize once more the valuable work of the IOM, as well as the work and leadership of his, uh, direct, of his Director General and uh, all the work that we see here at this high-level meeting. The consequences of climate change are, are ever more inevitable, and states must pay all the attention to the effects on the movement of populations throughout the world affected by these phenomena. The link between migration, the environment, and climate change has uh, gained ever more importance in policy making at a national, regional, and international level. Human mobility, both uh, chosen and forced, uh, is a reality that needs to be treated in a holistic manner by all. Migration has, for my country, Costa Rica, been extremely important in its development, and the country has committed itself decidedly to the respect of human rights of migrants. These principles have been focused on participating at a national, regional, and international level on this subject, and I would like to make a few comments on the extraordinary support that we have received from members. The world faces new major trends for the next uh, 20 years, as you have said, uh, Deputy Director General. Now, I would like to highlight a few which will have an impact on uh, the increase of uh, global migration. The changes in demographic patterns will bring about greater demand for a qualified and a skilled and unskilled work force in the northern areas and we're also going to need to increase productive levels. The exponential demand for energy, water, and food within an environment where we are seeing an ex a finishing of Earth's resources and we'll also have an inter- and intra-state need. The increase in natural disasters and the changes brought about by climate change. These trends have a common denominator which we should be concerned with today. That is the increase in global migration over the coming decades. And this will be one of the major challenges facing institutions and global governance. In the face of this panorama, the international community needs to have a deep consideration and look at the following questions for the future. How are we going to prepare ourselves to face these challenges? How are we going to support the fundamental role of the IOM as the leading organization in the global management of migration over the next 20 years? What aspects should be made priority for states in the search for better governance to meet the needs of migrant populations? How can we achieve better coordination and sharing of knowledge, uh, institutional collaboration, and uh, operational interventions to protect and help migrants? What structures, mechanisms, and pre processes should we be building from now on in order to 
deal with this challenge in the coming decades. My country would like to contribute to this global thought process uh, through the spaces provided by the IOM in order to prepare better, both on a national, regional, and global level. Let's not wait until it has taken us over. Madam Director, delegates, I would like to refer to one of the aspects I mentioned before, which is the major trend for cross-border displacement caused by natural disasters and the adverse effects of climate change. Costa Rica would like to reaffirm its commitment to work on the subject by being part of the steering committee of the Nansen Initiative, uh, which uh, the IOM participates in as well. As Ambassador from Switzerland has said my country took part in the second regional Nansen initiative consultation in the Central American region and we saw civil society, government representatives, regional and international organizations and academia who looked at the challenges and the international displacements uh, due to these phenomena. The outcomes were very relevant, and in February 2015, in San Jose, we will be holding a workshop on humanitarian assistance, and this will be a follow-up of this consultation. We also expect that in 2015, which will be very important, where we will see the protection agenda adapted, and we think it will represent major progress in attending to the vulnerable populations affected. We encourage other states to join the Nansen Initiative and contribute to this significant process. We are pleased that uh, international displacements through natural disasters and uh, climate change has been added into the Cartagena plus 30 agenda. Our population is particularly vulnerable to natural disasters, as we already know. And when we saw the devastating effects of the Hurricane Mitch and uh, other disasters, and it shows the impact and implication for those populations which are displaced. We have looked a lot at prevention and response and risk management in our region, in particular in Central America, thanks to close cooperation between regional mechanisms and the regional conference on migration. I'd like to mention the mechanism which exists in Central America, which we have called which is the Center for the Preparation of uh, Management of uh, Natural Disasters in Central America. Now, the role and the active work of the organization, including the subject in regional strategies, has been fundamental. We recently held a workshop on climate change and migration organized by IOM in Chile in October this year, where climate change, uh, environmental change, and uh, the effects on human movement were widely discussed. Another major trend, which I mentioned, is migration forced through conflict, which is either within or, or, with, or between states. And this uh, has uh, shown us a humanitarian crises recently which exist, have existed for many years. And that's why it's very important to have the IOM participate in uh, the crisis countries through the MISIC program. And my country is part of the working group uh, of the efforts made to coordinate with IOM to establish uh, guidelines to improve attendance uh, for migrants uh, in crises through civil disturbance or natural disasters. And this has been discussed to a great extent in various Fora. For example, in our region within the framework of the Regional Conference on Migration, the support, promotion, and building of this initiative is essential. Madam Director, members of the panel, delegates, we consider that IOM's uh, contribution uh, on the subject of human mobility uh, should be 
praised for their involvement on a regional and international level, and it is in line with the results of the high-level dialogue of the United Nations on international migration and development, which took place in 2013, as has been affirmed at various, uh, on various occasions by the Director General. It's necessary for the subject of migration to be incorporated in the post-2015 agenda, and so the alliances of the, IO, the IOM uh, with the, within the framework of the United Nations Nations on the Convention on Climate Change, um, the Convention on uh, the for Combating Desertification, the uh, Disaster Risk Reduction Work of the United Nations, the Climate Vulnerability Forum and uh, the GMG, among others, have been uh, key. At the same time, it is essential that the Hyogo Framework for Action uh, should refer to migrations within the context of sustainable development adaptation to climate change and the reduction of disaster risk, disaster risk reduction. States should make an effort to incorporate uh, in their national and regional policies the subject of disaster risk reduction within their development policies, and we need to look at emergency preparedness, response and recovery within that too. And so we need to have uh, concrete and practical policies on a national level. It's essential for us to work closely with IOM and the regional mechanisms to face up to these new challenges and to ensure that we continue ensuring the respect of human rights of migrants as well as working harder on the links between migration and development. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ten speakers in the list, so I will uh, ask you, if possible, in order to allow the, also the panel to, to provide some responses to, uh, to be short. Uh, the Excellency, the Ambassador of Germany, you have the floor. Deputy Director General, distinguished panelists, excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Germany commends the topic of this high-level debate. And I would also like to commend the panelists for their excellent uh, contributions and uh, ample food for thought. During the last two decades, the world has witnessed a strong increase in the frequency and in the intensity of natural hazards in all parts of the world. The most devastating disasters coming to mind were the tsunami in Asia in 2004, the earthquake in Haiti in 2010, the drought and famine in the Horn of Africa in 2011, the floods in the Philippines in 2013, uh, inter alia. All this has led to an increase of migratory movements in all of its forms, including internally placed, displaced people and refugees. The timing of highlighting migrants environment and climate change activities in this council, MECC, is excellent and complements the discussions we've had at the Standing Committee on Program and Finances earlier this year in June. Climate change and its effects may be sudden onset or they may be slow onset, but very often are high impact for millions and soon billions of persons worldwide. Let me, in line with the principles of this organization, focus on three observations. The first lesson that we can draw from the scene-setting presentation and from the background papers that climate change-related work within IOM is as cross-cutting as it could be. It involves the improved strategy, including the main, main three objectives of MECC and the structures of the Migration Crisis Operational Framework, the MOCOF. It taps into intellectual, it taps intellectually into the resources at IOM headquarters in operational terms as well as migration management expertise. And it taps financially into the IOM Development Funds, IDF. The core group at the IOM's MECC section needs to keep up the good work of bringing all these different threads together in a complex exercise. Second, at the same time, climate change implications are by nature an interagency task. We commend IOM for its cooperation efforts with the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the International Panel on Climate Change, and many others 
in the environmental context. Here we would also like, as the panel has done, uh, the underlined the work of the Nansen Initiative on cross-border climate change-related displacement, where IOM is a member of the steering group. With IOM's climate expertise of more than 22 years, we believe IOM's active contributions are crucial for the work of the Nansen Initiative, and we would invite IOM as the leading migration agency to be even more active in this cross-border displacement research project. We can afford to build up, uh, we cannot afford to build up parallel expertise but should rather aim for integrated expertise. Thirdly, the involvement of affected populations was a must for us in the long line of IOM activities on environmental migration. From the International Dialogue on Migration in 2011, all the way through to this summer's briefing on the recent MECC, MEC LEP projects. Deputy Director General, environmental migration is at the same time a challenge and it is a solution. Perception varies within and between affected populations. This is why a key task is to train the multipliers, reach out to affected populations, listen to the displaced, involve them in the work, and finally coach them, uh, quote unquote, on the quote unquote opportunities side of the coin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Peru, tiene la palabra. Peru, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Director General. I'll be relatively brief in this statement, but I just wanted to extend my thanks to those who've made statements and presentations. It's quite clear that the connection between a climate change the environment and human mobility is very topical and we're very grateful for the IOM's work in presenting the positive aspects of migration and to build that into thinking about climate change. COP20, which will be held in Lima from the 1st to the 12th of December, is going to be a meeting point for all international voices. It won't only bring the international debate about climate change to an event, but it will also be an opportunity to raise awareness in the international community about the effects of climate change and mitigation efforts. Delegates, on behalf of the government of Peru, I'd like to reiterate our invitation to COP20. We'll be waiting for you in Lima from next week onwards. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, best of luck with COP20. After Peru comes France. France, you have the floor. Thank you. France would like to echo the previous speakers who've lauded the quality of the panelists and the statements which they've made. This has shed light on a number of things which we had already thought about and a number of others which we hadn't thought about. Very interested to hear about uh, the Rio documents from Chile. They're very useful to hear about. We've seen in France that climate change will become a determining factor in displacement in the future and in migration in general. France has given a great deal of attention to this in various bodies dealing with migration and mobility, and it will continue to do so. I always know that the international community needs more precise tools to be able to deal with this phenomenon, and that's why we've been engaging in a number of partnerships in this field, particularly with the IOM. We're pleased to see the signature of an agreement this morning between the Convention on Desertification and the IOM, and we're very keen to see the outcomes of that work, to have a better idea of the links between land degradation, desertification, and migration. We're also very attentive to the Nansen Initiative, and we're involved in the group of friends of the initiative uh, preparing for the conference, as Ambassador Wilde mentioned, next autumn, a few months after the COP. You can imagine the amount of pressure we're under. From your diagnosis, we saw that uh, regional consultations have seen uh, that problems vary by region. 
And that's perhaps why we need first to mount a regional response to the problems which we face. We know that the IOM will play a pivotal role in looking at the issue of uh, migration and climate change through its activities and its research. Unfortunately, we don't always know about those links, and we hope that this type of document, once it's been translated into French, of course, will allow us to disseminate your knowledge more broadly. We're very pleased that the Director General intends to create a specific unit in the IOM to deal with this issue, and I think that will raise the profile of the organization in general. We also applaud what Ambassador Wilde said about uh, the IOM's role in terms of the Nansen Initiative. This issue of displaced persons as a result of climate change is quite a new topic at the international level. There are a number of existing projects, and we need to build on those. We're very pleased to see that the IOM is looking to that with a number of its partnerships. As uh, the host country of the COP21, which will take place next year, we'll do what we can to ensure that there's a binding agreement applicable to all to reduce climate change. We think that this is key if we continue to limit the effects of climate change. Thank you very much. Madam Deputy Director General of IOM Distinguished Panelists, I want to thank all of you for highlighting a very important aspect, the climate change and uh, its impact on migration. Uh, I wish to point out the comment which is made by uh, Ms. Monique Barbet, Executive Secretary, United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. She mentioned that uh, uh, countries receive remittances and these remittances, remittances may be used for uh, combating uh, climate change and migration. Uh, I just wanted to uh, point out that these remittances generally comes from a very large number of people who whose remittances are generally used for making the livelihood for their own family. And although it looks very big in terms when they are put together, but the way and at the quantity at which it comes, it becomes, uh, uh, I mean, too minuscule. And the other part is that, per se, the government does not have any claim on those money which comes to their country, because these are the hard-earned earnings of the individuals. And uh, many countries, including India, which is one of the major remittance uh, receiving country. The government has made up policies for uh, uh, investments, channelizing the investments of remittances which comes, but it is purely on the wishes and the decision, economic decision taken by the individuals. As a government, we have no authority because we are a open, we uh, believe in an open system that the person who have earned the money, it is he who is the right, uh, who have the right to decide about the ways and means of investments. Uh, uh, the other point is that, uh, uh, so we see that these remittances has no relationship with uh, combating uh, uh, climate change and uh, per se we don't believe that government have any uh, direct role in channelizing these investments without the explicit consent of the person who this money belongs to. Uh, uh, I uh, fully support the uh, views and remarks expressed by the Honorable uh, Ambassador of Bangladesh, where he have highlighted the challenges which are faced by the South Asian countries uh, in combating uh, uh, environmental challenges, which ranges from uh, uh, frequency of cyclones and other disaster-related issues which emerges from the Indian Ocean 
two desertification and uh, periodic and frequent floods so uh, i mean so these challenges are there and uh, our countries as a whole and as a regional group are working to develop uh, i mean so drought resistant crops efficient irrigation system and uh, salt tolerant varieties and also using the indigenous and the local knowledge for uh, promoting the livelihood rather than looking for displacement of those people so uh, what i uh, just wanted to convey that uh, apart from looking into the bigger issue of migration because of environmental uh, issues we should also look into increasing the resilience of the society and giving them necessary skills to fight with these challenges and uh, develop their livelihood there itself thank you thank you very much india uh, since we have uh, several speakers still I would ask the panelists to take note of the questions that are addressed or comments directly to them, and then at the end we'll give you a round to, to respond to each one of you. Uh, Mexico, tiene la palabra. Mexico, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Ambassador Thompson, Deputy Director General. I'd like to thank all the panelists for their excellent contributions and for the information which they've given us. There's no doubt that the impact of uh, the environment and climate change on human mobility is a reality which is becoming clearer and clearer. However, it's still crucial that the debate be based on accurate data which allow specific short, medium and long-term activities to be planned. The, the impact of the environment on migration means that we need more information and member states should harness the experience of organizations such as the IOM to lead to concrete evidence and lead to the development of appropriate methodologies under the auspices of each organization's competencies. This will allow all stakeholders, and particularly states, to hone coherent public policies based on reliable data. The IOM's experience should be combined with the efforts of other bodies and or processes, the main focus of which is climate change. This dovetailing of efforts will undoubtedly benefit from existing synergies and will optimize the use of resources all of this would impact on the efficiency of our operations and allow us to hone policies which will help us to prevent migration caused by climate change related issues. There's no doubt that the IOM's capacity and experience is very useful for these ongoing processes and they will allow us to identify the potential scenarios which we might face. The IOM could benefit from its existing programs to garner real data about environment and population movement and this would provide further bases for international debates. In light of this, we'd like to recognize the usefulness of the IOM's involvement in the Nansen Initiative, which has been brilliantly presented to us this afternoon. We'd of course encourage the IOM to continue to participate in these processes. And we hope that uh, there'll be substantive involvement over the course of forthcoming events, which are of relevance to migration and climate change. This will allow the IOM not only to coordinate with other bodies, but also to prevent the negative impacts and to mount responses based on evidence to meet the specific needs of the most vulnerable populations. We're completely available to continue participating in all debates around this matter. Thank you very much.
Thank you. The next speaker is His Excellency the Ambassador of Benin. Thank you very much, Deputy Director General. The delegation of Benin would like most sincerely to thank the AOM for having included this topic of the high-level dialogue on human mobility, environment and climate change on the agenda for this 105th Council. As we all know, humans are at the heart of this topic, and as we know, Men and women are the most valuable asset we have. I'd like, therefore, to thank the panelists, the management of the IOM, both of them for the information which has been given to us and the documents which have been made available. The information given to us this afternoon has been very useful. We've seen in those data and in the latest report from the IPCC that there are major risks to be faced where climate change is concerned. And in some cases, these threaten our very existence. So we need to take action at the individual level, at the group level, at the country level, at the regional level, and at the level of the international community. We'd also like to issue an appeal for the COP20, which is about to take place in Peru, and the Conference of the Parties in Paris in December next year, serve as an opportunity to renew our commitments. Those commitments should allow us to contain the risk and face the challenges presented to us by climate change as a single international community. The Nansen Initiative, the work on the toolboxes and the formulation of guidelines, as well as uh, synergies and collaboration between institutions of the UN family working on conventions related to nature and climate change, all of these things should be supported. That will mean that at the country level, be it in developed, developing or least developed countries, we have the opportunity to share experiences and share technological capacity and expertise to support states and uh, reach for the goals which we strive to achieve. Between Lima and Paris, there are other important events which we should all be involved in that will allow us to move towards the achievement of those goals. So that's the appeal which Benin wanted to extend to you all. And I'd like again to congratulate the IOM on its initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Venezuela, you have the floor. Thank you, Ambassador. Like others who've taken the floor before me, I'd like to thank the panelists for the information which they've brought to the debate here today. As I was listening to one of these statements, Ms. Barbut, we were hearing about all the different data available, and it reminded me of that famous video which uh, we uh, once saw called Uncomfortable Truth which came from the United States. So we've heard about all this thinking about the impact which climate change is having nowadays. And, uh, 
eh, As part of my comments, I wanted to say that there are fewer doubts today about the life of our planet and climate change. Previously, we said that there wasn't sufficient scientific evidence, and there was also a great fear that economic fallout might be seen if we were to recognize that climate change was taking place. Then we saw the failure of the Kyoto Protocol, and we now find ourselves negotiating again to strive to ensure that governments take on a more serious commitment in this field. We also see governments blaming one another, and that's wasted valuable time and prevented us from showing our, opportunity, our responsibilities. We now have more convincing evidence and governments are taking things more seriously. We echo what was said by Bangladesh, according to which the consequences of climate change can affect the most vulnerable populations, particularly the poorest populations, who are forced to be displaced. Forced migration, by definition, is a negative phenomenon which can lead to further problems, and it's very far from being a solution to anything. Undoubtedly, the majority of those here agree that the main responsibility falls to states and governments. But I would like to hear from the panelists whether they have an opinion about the responsibility of international companies in managing these crises which we face. In some regions of Latin America, for instance, speak of my own region, the environmental damage caused by commercial exploitation of certain parts of the Amazon have had an environmental impact of significant proportions and obliged thousands of country dwellers to move. A number of other aspects could be focused on here, but I want to move on now to what was said by Chile. Chile is one of has one of the highest uh, rates of sufferance where climate change is concerned. There have been a number of natural disasters which have had massive consequences for the population. It's very interesting to hear from Chile mentioning uh, some of the links between migration and climate change, particularly mass displacement as a result of climate change. I think Chile has some very enviable policies, however, in that regard. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Director General. On behalf of my delegation, allow me to express our appreciation to the IOM for organizing this meeting and to the panelists for their expert opinions. Okay. In the interest of time, and I know that is, we have no more time, let me just go straight to, uh, to share with you the recent developments on two multi-state initiatives of which my country is actively involved with. First, last month on 15 to 17 October, we hosted the Fort Nansen Initiative Regional Consultation in Manila under the theme Human Mobility in the Context of Disasters and Climate Change in Southeast Asia. More than 100 participants attended such meeting uh, representing at least nine Southeast Asian countries and from regional, international organizations, agencies, civil society, and research institutions. Uh, the objectives of that consultation were to identify specific challenges and opportunities that the region faces related to disasters, climate change in human mobility and develop practical policy and programmatic recommendations on how to address these changes, these challenges at national, regional and uh, international levels. Um, the participants identified several areas for intervention. I'll just mention three of which. One, for stakeholders to consider planned relocation only in cases where climate
climate change adaptation measures prove insufficient to protect communities and ensuring that this move takes into account the people's community ties and cultural values while providing adequate livelihood, housing, and other basic social services that would sustain these communities. Second, for stakeholders to encourage temporary admission of displaced persons abro abroad, especially when their lives are at risk, and to examine the possibility of developing temporary protection mechanisms at bilateral and sub-regional levels, and for sending and receiving states uh, to protect migrants abroad in times of disaster, especially through provisions of consular services and emergency assistance, regardless of their status, and arranging their safe budgets. Migrant workers associations abroad can also help in proactive role in establishing regional relief network to help raise resources and finance relief efforts for this disaster. The other initiative that the Philippines is actively engaged with is the Migrant in Crisis in Countries in Crisis uh, initiative, which we could chair with the uh, work of chairing with the U United States. This initiative is one of the concrete action plans emerging from the second UN high-level dialogue on migration and development held in New York in 2013. This initiative aims to improve the ability of states and other relevant stakeholders to prepare for, respond to, and protect the dignity and rights of migrants caught in countries experiencing an acute crisis, including those caused by natural disasters. To do so, the initiative will consider full spectrum of measures and relevant stakeholders in passing elements of emergency preparedness, institutional capacities, humanitarian assistance, and protection and post-crisis through the process of broad and exclusive consultations, the initiative aims to produce a set of voluntary guidelines and principles with the roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders vis-a-vis -vis migrants in countries in crisis and compile good practices in preparing for, responding to, and addressing long-term consequences of such situations. A working group has been set up for this and uh, with composed of six states, namely Australia, Bangladesh, Costa Rica, Ethiopia, Philippines, and the United United States, and we've been ably assisted uh, financially and technically by uh, the European Commission, the Special Representative of the Secretary General on International Migration and Development, the IOM, the UNHCR, and the Georgetown University Institute for Study of International Migration. Madam um, Deputy Director General, as the regional consultations of this initiative will commence early next year, we hope that states and other stakeholders will be there to actively contribute in the development of this initiative. Thank you, Madam. Uh, Thank you very much. Ethiopia, you have the floor now. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy Director General. Uh, we commend IOM for the holding of this panel. I think it's a topical issue, and it's an issue to which Ethiopia attaches great importance to both climate change and migration. Uh, we thank the panelists for the explanation and briefings in which, uh, on the initiatives they are involved in and on their country's experience. Uh, climate change and climate-induced migration is a phenomena that requires closer attention. Um, in the sub-Saharan Africa, climate change has brought about like crop failure, rising temperature, new type of pesticides, desertification, as well as natural disasters. Um, this in turn has led to the increase in the mobility of people across international borders and climate-induced displacement. Uh, this, in our view, would require states to commit themselves to address in climate change through uh, climate adaptation, mitigation, strengths and international cooperation, technology transfer, capacity building. Um, in this regard, uh, we look forward to the COP20 in Peru and uh, we, uh, we hope that it would be uh, fruitful in terms of its outcome. Uh, we welcome initiatives like the Nansen initiative by Na uh, Switzerland and Norway because they do address these issues and you know the legal issues and, and so on. Uh, we concur with uh, one of the previous speakers that the protection and uh, humanitarian assistance of climate-induced migrants uh, should uh, should get the necessary attention. Uh, to be uh, to conclude, Madam uh, Deputy Director, we have two questions for the panelists. Uh, the first one would be, how do you evaluate the existing international and regional 
uh, institutional and legal frameworks for the protection of climate-induced displaced persons. Um, we have noted the work of IOM on, uh, to address climate, climate change or climate-induced uh, migrants. What do, you think need, uh, what do you think needs to be done uh, from IOM and its member states within the framework of IOM to complement and further strengthen this work, uh, which is already started and which we have a report in this regard in our hand now? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Tiapia. I have now IDMC. Microphone, please. Now, the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center would like to uh, thank you, Madam Chair and the panel, for giving us this opportunity. I would also like to introduce a new term into this very difficult discussion, and that is to understand the trajectory of displacement. We need to ask ourselves, what about those who cannot cross the border? What about those who cannot flee or escape or move or migrate from their areas of origin? Those who are confined because different political situations do not allow them to move. We need to understand all this in that. And why it's so? I am also a messenger of the bad news. By 2100, 39% of the global population will be in Africa. If we don't have solutions, preventions, equality, governance, peace, you will have more internal displacement and more cross-border migration. Protection should not, not only be seen as something that is a right, and an action needed for those who cross the border. We need to reinforce protection for those who are internally displaced. In 2013, 8.2 million people were internally displaced by conflict. 22 million were internally displaced in 2013 by disasters. All data by the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center shows that since 1970 until 2013, the risk for internal displacement due disasters has doubled. And that is independent on the size of the hazard or the frequency of the hazard, meaning climate change. So independently from climate change, the risk for internal displacement due hazards since 1970 has doubled. Add on that climate change hazards, which will be more severe and more frequent, we will have more internal displacement, and there will be more cross-border migration. So what, where are the solutions? It is to prevent the preventable and prepare for the unavoidable. And for all these and also distinguished missions, we will be sending you a letter, as we also did last year, asking all your countries for information on internal displacement in your countries in 2014. This is not impossible to solve. All of these problems have been made by humans, and humans can respond and do something about this. We need data, we need information, but also we need political will. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, the World Bank. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for uh, such informative presentations to uh, all of the panelists today. Excellencies, dis distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, environment is one of, uh, one of the many reasons that prompt people to migrate, sometimes operating on its own, but more often through other mechanisms. 
particularly loss of livelihoods affected by environmental disruption. It is important to understand the ways in which environmental change intersects with development to make people more or less vulnerable or resilient to both acute environmental events and ongoing environmental processes. Uh, like before me, I would also like to underscore the importance of the three international conferences that are coming up in two, uh, 2015 and 2016 and where the issues related to environmental change and migration will be on the agenda and so provide opportunities to have an impact, so, namely the World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, which will happen in Sendai in 2015, the 21st Conference of the Parties and the 11th meeting of the parties to the Kyoto Protocol, as well as the World Humanitarian Summit, uh, which will be held in May 2016 in Istanbul. And the World Bank Group will continue to support the preparatory work that is already underway um, in anticipation of each of these events. Um, I would like to specifically note that the Global Knowledge Partnership on Migration and Development, uh, which is better known as NOMAD, uh, whose secretariat is hosted by the World Bank, will aim to contribute to the discussions in each of the preparatory processes. In 2015, NOMAD's thematic working group on environmental change and migration will continue enhancing and improving access to knowledge and information for evidence-based policies and decision-making. Allow me to very briefly highlight two expected deliverables. The first is a scheduled workshop on longitudinal approaches to research on the efficacy of adaptation strategies related to migration. And the second deliverable is that the working group is commissioning papers to explain three important issues that need to be addressed in adaptation planning, namely the impact of vulnerability and resilience in individuals, households and communities on migration and adaptation, a mapping of institutions that must be involved in adaptation planning related to migration, and south-south movements of people in the context of environmental change. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks. Uh, and my last speaker is the UNHCR. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, UNHCR would like to emphasize the importance of a collaborative approach among agencies to deal with uh, this important and cross-cutting issue of human mobility in the context of climate change. UNHCR works hand in hand with IOM uh, within an advisory group uh, on human mobility and climate change. This group is also composed of members of other UN agencies, think tanks, uh, civil society organizations, which considers that close cooperation in framing and communicating issues surrounding human mobility in response to, to climate change is the most effective way to inform policy making. The advisory group focuses on human mobility as an adaptation strategy with the aim of leveraging evidence and enhancing knowledge and understanding of migration and plant relocation as adaptation strategies. The group informs several major interrelated policy processes on climate change, disaster risk reduction, and sustainable development that are expected to culminate in agreement in 2015, uh, including the legally binding treaty under the UNFCCC process. UNHCR is also supporting the Nansen Initiative on Cross-Border Displacement in the context of disaster and climate change. And the outcome of regional consultations have also emphasized that while preparing for and responding to displacement when it occurs is crucial, states and regional organizations need a set of policy options that address a spectrum of human mobility that can be implemented before displacement or other forms of vulnerable movements occur. Anticipatory planning, such as facilitating migration and planned relocation, are crucial to prevent or mitigating displacement reducing vulnerability and threatening the resilience of communities. Thank you, Madam Chair.
Thank you very much, uh, and uh, uh, thanks for, to all of you for your participation. We are already 50 minutes uh, uh, out of a schedule, but uh, I will not close this panel without giving the panelists uh, the possibility of respond to some of the comments and, and questions that have been put through that to them. So I will start with Madame Barbu. Thank you very much, and uh, all that uh, 